This is Lake from the Metro Outreach Team, and I'm really excited to be sharing with you our climate change basics lesson. By the end of the video today, you are going to feel like an expert in being able to explain what climate change is and why it's happening. I recommend that you have a paper and something to write with today, and if you'd like to find a person to share your ideas with, you can also do that now. The very first question that I want to get started on is, what have you heard about climate change? So take a minute, pause, write, or say something you've heard about climate change before. Now, when I hear people talk about climate change, sometimes I hear people talk about global warming. I hear people talk about ice melting and polar bears losing their habitats. Sometimes I hear something about carbon dioxide. And I also generally hear people saying it's bad. It's not something we want to have happen. Those things are all true and they're all related to what we're going to talk about today. Before we jump too far into it, I want to be really clear. When we talk about climate, we're not talking about the weather that you can see outside your window. So it was rainy all week and tomorrow it's going to be sunny. That's an example of a weather change. When we talk about climate, what we're really talking about is the normal weather patterns of an area over a long period of time, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. And when the climate is changing, we're talking about a change in the normal temperature that it is over a long period of time. How much rain is falling there over five years? How, what kind of storms are forming? That's an example of a climate change. And we're going to see examples of that today. So I'd love for you to take a look at this image. And you can pause the video and write or say just an observation about what you see. Let me get a little closer for you here. So when I look at this image, I notice blues and reds of different shades. I notice lots of skinny vertical lines. It kind of makes me think of a barcode. And what we're actually looking at is a timeline. So every line represents a different year. The first blue line is the year 1885, over 100 years ago. And the last red line is 2018. And you can probably guess by now, but the color represents the average temperature of the air that was measured around the world. The more blue it was, the colder it was, and the more red it is, all the way into that dark, almost brown red line, the hotter the temperature was. So this tells us a few things that are really important. One thing that I notice is it's mostly blue. That's one reason why we call it climate change. For a really long time, the average temperature of the air has been the same. It hasn't gone up or down that much. If we could go back in time even farther before 1885, it would just be a lot of blue lines for all the humans up until the last 100 years or so, we notice this change from blue into red, the temperature is getting hotter. I'm gonna show you this in another way. This is basically the same information that we just saw with the colored lines. Along the x-axis on the bottom, you have the year. And along the y-axis is the temperature change. And all of the little black dots are the average temperature that was measured for that year. So as the black dots get higher and higher and higher, it represents that change from blue all the way up into the red, up to that very highest two points you can see. The highest one, that would be 2016, hottest year on human history in record. That's the hottest year humans have ever experienced. And right below that, 2019. So this represents a very significant pattern of climate change. And when we change the temperature like this, it turns out it changes pretty much everything else about how our weather systems form. So it changes how hot the days are, how much water is evaporating from the soil, which then changes how hard it is or easy it is for plants to grow. Then when all that water evaporates, it has to fall somewhere. So it changes how much rain is falling in other places, how strong the storms are, storms like hurricanes, with lots of wind and flooding. Um, in those hot and dry places, it can cause more fires because it's easy for a wildfire to spread. Um, and when it's hot and dry, what happens to ice? It melts. So this is affecting our oceans right now. And a lot of people who are concerned about climate change are people who live along coastlines, who live on islands, who are saying the water level is rising and I'm losing my home. So at this point, we have to stop and ask ourselves a question. Well, <laughs> 
What's causing the climate to change? We know it's changing, but why? So I'll let you pause and think about it and then we can share some ideas. Now, sometimes I hear people um, talk about climate change. They mention pollution, they mention greenhouse gases, they mention factories. That's all right on track. We're gonna start today by looking at pollution from fossil fuels. Now, fossil fuels are those fuels that we use for energy all around our world. Oil, coal, natural gas, and we burn these to power things. So maybe in a ship to power it, maybe in an apartment building to get electricity. We are burning these fuels for power. And when we burn fossil fuels, there's a gas that goes out into the air. You probably have heard of it before, carbon dioxide. Now, let's pause with carbon dioxide here. Carbon dioxide is actually already a natural part of our atmosphere, even before we started burning fossil fuels. And it's been here for a really long time. It's in the room with me right now. It has no color, no smell. Um, it has a natural way that it moves through the environment. So let's kind of look at that cycle for just a minute. Now, you probably can think of a living thing that absorbs carbon dioxide, plants. That's how they grow. They use that carbon dioxide to grow their leaves and their branches and get bigger. Then animals eat plants, animals eat animals, and animals breathe out carbon dioxide. It goes back into the air and then the plants can absorb it again. It's a cycle and it's been happening that way for a really long time. That is natural. But I want you to think, how are humans changing that natural cycle? Take a look at this image. When we burn those extra fossil fuels, driving cars, shipping planes and ships around the world, burning coal for electricity in factories, we add, look at the red arrows, a ton of extra carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And it doesn't really go away. It kind of just hangs out there. Now that's a problem because carbon dioxide is what's called a greenhouse gas. Now, if you've ever been in a greenhouse, you've probably felt the greenhouse effect. Now, if you haven't been in a greenhouse, I bet you've experienced it still. If you've ever gotten into a car that's parked in the sun on a really hot day, the sun's been shining in through the windshield, you open the door and that wave of heat hits you, that's the greenhouse effect. So here's what's going on. The sun shines in through the windshield and when the heat gets inside, it's trapped. It bounces around and warms up. Sunlight comes in easily, heat can't get out and it gets warmer and warmer. The same thing is happening on our whole planet. Take a look on a massive scale. So the, ener the sun gives us so much energy every single second. Most of that energy is radiated back into space as heat, but some of that heat gets trapped by that blue line around our earth. That is our atmosphere. And that's a layer of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide that warm us up. They're like a blanket for the earth. If we didn't have any greenhouse gases, our earth would be a frozen ice ball. There would be no plants, no animals, no us. So we need some of it. But I want you to predict for a minute, what would happen if we made that blue line thicker? More heat would get trapped. And just like we're seeing on a global scale, temperatures would go up. Here's a real photo of the impact that we're talking about right now. And I'll just let you pause and observe for a minute. We're looking over the surface of the earth as the sun starts to rise. And that hazy blue line you can see is actually our atmosphere. So when we add a lot of extra carbon dioxide and other gases, they don't just disappear into space, they stick around. And that causes changes to our climate that we can experience in the form of temperature rise, increased storms and intense weather, droughts, wildfires, um, that are affecting people all around the world. You've done a great job so far. I want you to think about what we've been learning and we have one more big question to ask that some of you are maybe asking now, which is how do we know that it's the CO2 in the atmosphere that's causing warming? How do we know it's not the sun or just some other natural cycle of the earth? And the answer to this is ice cores. 
we have found a way to take giant drills out on Antarctic ice, drill down three miles back to ice layers that formed 800,000 years ago. When you get down that low, you get little tiny bubbles of air that got trapped in the ice, and you can analyze the air and figure out things about the temperature and the composition of gases. So take a look at this graph. We now have two pieces of information. In red, you see the temperature going up and down. And in blue, you see the carbon dioxide gas going up and down. And if you look at the scale on the bottom, we're going back in time over the last 800,000 years. So please pause and just share one thing that catches your attention about this graph. And there isn't just one right answer. One thing that I notice when I look at this graph is that these two lines seem really similar. In fact, we could stack them almost on top of each other and they go up and down in the same way. At any point in the graph when CO2 goes up, temperature also goes up. When CO2 goes down, temperature also goes down. They track each other and it's been happening this way in a natural cycle for hundreds of thousands of years. That's one way we can be sure that carbon dioxide leads to a temperature change because we've seen it happen over time. Another thing I notice is how high that star is for the current level of carbon dioxide. That is way higher than any of the natural peaks of carbon dioxide in the past. That tells us the change we're experiencing now has something to do with human activity. All of the fossil fuels we're burning and changes that we're making to our atmosphere not just something the Earth is doing to itself from a natural cycle. And if CO2 is that high, we know temperature is going to go that high as well. That's one reason it's so important we're thinking about this and we're taking action. So as your last kind of thinking activity before I say goodbye, I would love for you to take a minute, journal, or say out loud one thing you want to be sure you remember from this video that's going to stick in your brain or that you might even want to share with someone who's important to you. I'll see you next time.